Well, in 1453, at the time of the Greek Byzantine Empire's collapse, Cyprus had already been under Western Catholic rule for 200 years since it had been conquered from a rogue Byzantine aristocrat in 1191 by King Richard I of England, who then established the Kingdom of Cyprus. The new kingdom became a multicultural blend of Western and Greek culture, and despite being officially Catholic, the local Orthodox Christian Greeks were given cultural autonomy, and the Greek language was still used for all documents. This tolerance resulted in the Western reign over Cyprus being largely peaceful, but since the Muslim Turks had finally defeated the Greek Empire, this would change very soon. In 1570, the Turkish Ottoman Empire launched a full-scale invasion of Cyprus, and despite fierce Greek resistance, the Greeks were eventually defeated by the 60,000 men strong invasion force who committed numerous massacres against the island's Greek and Armenian populations. One example that perfectly encapsulates just how brutal and inhumane the medieval jihadists were against the native Christians is the tragic story of Marco Antonio Bragandin. During the invasion of Cyprus, Cyprus was ruled by the Venetians and the man who was put in charge of the defense of the important city of Famagusta was Bragadin, a Venetian lawyer and military officer. Under Bragadin's command, the city of Famagusta put up a heroic defense against the far more numerous barbaric invaders who outnumbered the Christians 10 to 1. But after four months, the walls of Famagusta were collapsing and the supplies were running out, so Bragadin began negotiations with the Turkish invaders. Bragadin managed to negotiate a surrender which allowed for all of the town's population to be spared. For four days, the evacuation of the town proceeded smoothly, but during the official surrender ceremony, the Turks betrayed Bragadin. First, the Turks captured Bragadin, whose nose and ears they cut off, and then after Afterwards, the Turkish Muslims began brutally massacring all of Famagusta's remaining Christians without a shed of honor nor dignity. Bragadin was left in a jail cell for two weeks. Afterwards, he was forced to walk around the walls of Famagusta with sacks of stone on his back. Next, he was tied to a chair and hoisted to the yard arm of the Turkish flagship, where he could be harassed by the Turkish sailors. And then, finally, he was taken to his place of execution in the main square. Here, the heroic Bragadin was tied naked to a column and skinned alive. Bragadin's quartered body was then distributed as a war trophy among the Muslim army, and his skin was stuffed and paraded around the streets of Famagusta in a deplorable attempt to mock Marco Antonio Bragandin and Famagusta's native population. Bragadin's skin was later stolen, or rather recovered, from Constantinopolis' arsenal in 1580 by the young Venetian seaman Girolamo Polidori. He brought it back to Venice, where it was received as a return turning hero. This is just one example of how criminal and horrific the Turkish invaders acted against the Christians of Cyprus, but that hasn't stopped modern Turkish nationalists and Islamists from glorifying these inhumane acts. In 1954, an old cathedral which was vandalized under the Turks and turned into a mosque was renamed the Lala Mustafa Pasha Mosque in honor of Lala Mustafa Pasha, who was the commander that tortured and murdered Bragadin and massacred the Christian population. But while statues are coming down all across the West, this stolen cathedral still bears the name of its violator without a single outcry from the Western social justice movement. Imagine how horrible this occupation must have felt and still feels for the Cypriot people. First, the Greeks now had to survive massacres and over 300 years of Ottoman Islamist rule, where even their court testimony was ineligible in cases against the Turkish colonizers, among all the other previously mentioned demi rules. And then after having endured all of this, they are still forced to be reminded of this period every single day by having a stolen cathedral being named after Lala Mustafa Pasha, one of the main culprits of these immoral acts. <laughs> i
It flew right over your shoulder, your shoulder. Maybe, just maybe, 